everyone and welcome to layout number five homemade layout number five it is not day five but it is homemade layout five and i am creating a layout for the month of may so may is my mum our mum's birthday so this is going to be a layout about grandma so i've pulled a bunch of different things from my stash There's no one real collection mostly coco vanilla studios but a little bit of other things as well so the main sort of orangey colored background paper is a kaiser craft collection i don't know what it is it was gifted to me by a beautiful lady i went and bought her old um second hand typewriter for my sister and she asked me what i wanted it for and i said oh i do scrapbooking and she was there at the door with her old typewriter and this whole bunch of scrapbooking stuff. She's like, oh, here, take all this too. So I don't know what this collection is, but it's a really gorgeous sort of heritage style collection um, with this sort of ready burnt orange and a light blue color in it as well. So side note. Um, and then I've got a nice big circle of gold flower vellum. Not a clue where that's from. That was in my stash, but I cannot remember the collection or the kit or anything. Possibly Chimel, but I think it just came with the kit. My my monthly kit club had it in with that kit, but I don't even know if it was from there, so I have no idea. Then I've got a circle of um, tracing paper, which I just use like plain vellum. And then I've got a gorgeous cut file that is from the Confessions of a Paper Attic Etsy shop, which I'll link down below, um, that beautiful floral frame. And then I've got the gorgeous photo of my mum and little tiny baby Lincoln, and it is piled on layers and layers of paper. So there's a white layer, then there's pink happiness collection paper, then there's like a blue midnight collection paper, and then a floral happiness collection paper again. And those three papers are all Coco Vanilla Studios. Then this Bloom and Grow, Grow is also the thickest sheet from the Coco Vanilla Studios. Now, I don't know if this is what you want me telling you, like where everything comes from all the time. A lot of the time I'm using stuff that's so old you can't get it anyway. But yeah, or would you rather I just list it down below? I'm not really sure, but... I'll just keep rolling with it because what I'm actually doing in the layout is not that tricky. Um, it's kind of self-explanatory if you watch. Um, I know someone might ask me how I stuck on the vellum. I know you could see, but as in because it's see-through and you don't want that sticking through. I actually didn't. I just put some double-sided tape right in the center. So it's not really stuck down at all. But the Bloom and Grow is holding that large circle down. Um, because it's sort of half on the bloom and grow and half on the pattern paper. So that's holding it down. And the rest I'm just hoping doesn't fall off. It'll be inside a plastic pocket, so it should be okay. Um, that's what I'm just hoping. I really actually like the effect of, of having it sort of curling up and not being completely stuck down. The same with the um, cut file I used. I literally only put glue around the white circle edge and I did not glue any of the rest of it because I want it sort of sticking up a little bit. These beautiful butterflies I have fussy cut from a few different places. So the sort of double layered butterflies I fussy cut from the happiness pattern. No, from the midnight collection pattern paper. From the more than... Mm, from one of the Coco Vanilla Studios pattern paper, definitely not happiness, the double layer ones. Um, and I stuck those together uh, with double-sided tape. So there's like one color underneath and then another color on top. You'll be able to see that better in the close-ups. The bright colored butterflies in like the navy blue and the yellow, they I fussy cut from the um, happiness collection pattern paper. And the little teeny tiny butterflies um, that sort of some are closed, some are open. They I fussy cut from, maybe they were from the Chimel or maybe they were from the Amy Tan. They were fussy cut from a whole completely different collection. Um, 
The colours are a little bit off with those, but they do tie in a little bit with the floral colours that are around the last circle of the photo layers. Um, but I just loved the different sizes and the different shapes by adding those in. Um, I felt that the Coco Vanilla Studio butterflies that I fussy cut were all about the same. They all looked about the same. So I really just wanted to add some different sort of open and closed and big and small butterflies to the collection. I then decided to add on these florals. I'd been using them uh, a couple of layouts back in March and um, thought, why not just keep using those? They're already out. I hadn't packed them away yet. I find them really hard to put in albums because they're bulky. So now's the perfect time to use them. And coincidentally, it was there's a few florals on each of the grandma pages now. So some on grandma's and some on Omar's. So that was kind of cute. Unintentional, but kind of cute. So just poked them through the paper with um, a pin first to make the hole and then just used uh, sticky tape to stick down the stem just so when I slide that into a pocket it slides smoothly without getting caught on anything. Then I have got some, these were actually see-through word phrases um, like on acetate but I stuck them onto plain white paper and fussy cut them out first because I just find it really hard to read it when it's on like a clear see-through sticker. Um, yeah, clear stickers I, I do find really tricky. So I do often back those onto plain white paper before I use them. And I just loved the sentiment of those. Now my little helper is about to pop in in a minute. Um, to give me a hand with my scrapbooking because we always need a little bit of help with our scrapbooking. And <laughs> he was really trying to work this little black stick out. He just could not solve this one. So you can see there actually I'm bending up all the flowers, all the flowers, all the butterflies. I'd only glued them on using my glue and down, just down the center of their bodies. And so I've just pinned those, um, bent those all up. So just letting little man help stick on the hearts here, but... Of course, me being the perfectionist that I am, he wasn't quite putting them where I wanted them to be, so mummy had to take over. But he's happy. He's still helping. He's not getting in any trouble. He's still allowed to be there, so he doesn't mind. And I'm just about done just working out these last few little black love hearts. I just wanted to tie in that Bloom and Glow title. It's quite dark and quite heavy on the page and there's not a lot of other black going on. So I'll just do uh, a few rhinestones and of course a few splatters because a layout is never complete without some splatters. I think that's what I say every time. <laughs> there's very few layouts that I don't put Heidi Shine on. Um, Sometimes I do miss out on the Heidi Shine. Depends if the layout calls for it or not. But no, mostly I put on Heidi Shine. Um, just decided to go with the gold splatters this time. I didn't use any black. Jack just wants to see what these little bits and pieces are. Oh, what's that, mummy, he says. And so we splash on some Heidi Shine. And I'm not sure if you can see it in the video, but right at the end, I actually deliberately splashed some on his hand, which he thinks is hilarious. Wanted to know what it was, you see. So I said, here, we'll give you some splatter. Um, there it goes. So yeah, and now I'm going to flick through to the close-up photos so you can see the beauty of those gorgeous butterflies and all the different layers happening around the photo the actual photo, not these close-up photos. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed my May layout, my homemade gift number five. Please stay tuned for even more layouts. As you know, we've got something happening every day of December and I look forward to seeing you again um, tomorrow. Bye everyone. Thank you.